So this is British Blue Cyan. Isn't she lovely? Hey, okay. We've done it before, haven't we? So uh, she has just got a very, very dense coat. Very thick. And she doesn't let mum brush her. <laughs> Would you believe it? Mm -hmm. uh, so she gives mum about one minute at a time before she decides she's had enough and she's away. Uh, so she's coming to have a good groom through. Bit of a pamper babe, haven't you? Hey, And to get rid of some of this denseness of her coat. So she's a good girl just sitting there, aren't you? Hey. Let's have these tootsies. Let's just see what these tootsies look like. Oh, they're quite long, aren't they? Oh. Whoop. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Oh, dear. Come on, let's have that one again. Good girly. And the jig claw. Good girl. Right, now for the back one. Let's see what the back ones look like. Good girl. So it's just about okay. bringing them into your body, is it? When you're trying to do the claws. Yeah, so because she's on a table rather than um, we're surrounded by a wall or anything, you just pull them into your body. So you've got like a bit of an anchor here to, and they like to feel safe cats as well. So then your arm is around the back. So you've got two sides covered. And then if it's your own cat, you can actually come under the chin if you want. But I always go on top here because I've got a little bit more leverage here in case the cat decides to try and turn and bite. I've got an arm just resting on the shoulder there while I do those. But if it's your own and you can trust them, you can come under under that way and round. And then you've got sort of three sides covered. Yeah. And you're doing click claws. And then this one. This is always the tricky leg, I find. Oh, she's rolling over for me. Mm. Oh, well, thank you, babes. So what you do, you push the claws out to get the claw out. Do a snip. <laughs> Are you going to give me that claw that way or that way? Let's see. Let's go that way, because that's better. That's better going that way, boobs, for me. It is. There you go. No, I'd rather go that way. Thank you. Good girly. So you're pushing it away from the tootsies. Good girl. There we go. And you only need to take, you don't need to take as much off as me. If you're doing it regularly, every few weeks, you just need to trim the ends off. Um, and, and more so if it's an indoor cat, if they're outdoor, it doesn't matter too much because they'll wear them down. Again. Just a couple so of you more. always push, see how I'm pushing and that claw comes out? Yeah. That's what you want to do. Just a couple of mil off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I take a little bit more off, but you don't need to. One left. Well behaved. She very well behaved. There you go. Good girl. That's Tootsie's done. Isn't it? Hey? We always start on the head. There you go. Good girly. And then down on the chin. Down the shoulders. So, like we normally do, even with the long hair, start from the bottom, in and in and go through. Now, even the short hairs, when they've got these really dense coats, can mat like the long hairs. 
So you see that's just come out of that front shoulder. And usually the shoulders, they don't get an awful lot of, it's usually the, the back end where they have all the extra thickness of layers. So, so basically a short hair still needs grooming. They do, yeah. Just as important to groom short hair. Yeah, it's a bit of a myth, isn't it? You don't need them to. Very much a myth. Because um, we've got, we've always had Burmese, haven't we, Steve? Yeah. Which are very short haired and they love to be groomed. And you wouldn't think all that was trapped just at that No, point. just off that one shoulder, yeah. yeah. And then what we'll do, we'll do this all over to remove what we can with the comb. We'll also be putting a little bit of spray into the coat as well, and then we'll go over with the zoom groom as well. So there you go, that's just off. Her front shoulder. She wouldn't believe it looking at her, would you, that you'd get that out? And to the eye, she doesn't look like she needs to. No, she doesn't. It's when you feel her. Um, well, I suppose people feeling her just think she just, just feels, you know, like a cat should. But when I feel her, I know she's too thick. She's... Uh, Clubbed up. Yeah. <laughs> Should we catch her later? We'll carry on, yeah. So that's what's come out of this girly here. So that's with the uh, with the molten comb. So you wouldn't believe that that amount of dead hair would come away from her, would you? Because she's short haired. And that's all just come away with putting the comb through the coat. And, you know, and doing the usual splitting up and coming through on the part line and going under and, and she's still releasing stuff on this back end. So we can finish off still with the zoom groom for the image. And then what I'm going to do, look at that, see that's still coming out and that's yeah. with all that out of her as well. Still giving. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put a bit of spray on her. So just a little bit of, this is an oatmeal spray. And then... Is that on your website as well? Uh, well, what I've started doing, because it's been, I've been struggling to get that from UK suppliers recently. So I've started using aloe vera as well, which is a forever living product. Yeah. Which I really, really like. Um, and it's been recommended to veterinarian spray. I've got links to it underneath all my videos. So I've gone over to using that one more. But this oatmeal has got aloe in it as well. So we're on the zoom room now. So you can see what the zoom room is picking up after we've gone through with the comb. So literally, we're going in, you start off gently. And once they're quite sort of tolerant of it, you can go a little bit firmer because it is like having the massage. And um, basically you are stimulating the blood with the blood circulation. So it's like, it is like us having a massage. So you don't want to have a just a you know, little gently, gently, tickly, tickly. You want to be quite firm you know, obviously you don't want to squash the cat, but you want to be quite firm. And you'll be surprised, even what we've got off with the comb, what's now going to come off with the zoom groom as well, especially around this bit. And look, see. It's all the wispy but bits. But honestly, she feels like a different cat. She's getting that silky feel back into her coat. Whereas when she arrived, she was quite she felt quite coarse um, and dry. And she's now actually starting to feel more like a, a silky pussycat shed. Hey. So she's quite enjoying that, I think, lying there. Hey. Oh, she's a I'm right on camera. <laughs> I'll creep away. <laughs> oh, I'll creep away. Hey. She's lovely, isn't she? She's 
gorgeous. Mm -hmm. What's this, a blue? She's a British blue. Oh yeah, British blue, you are gorgeous, you are gorgeous, you are gorgeous. Yeah. So you can see what's coming away again here. Amazing, them brushes. They are amazing. You know, when she's short haired cat. That's all you need, really. <laughs> Well, you do need the comb because the comb gets yeah. you can feel any mats hiding deep under the coat the comb but then if i mean if she was done with this on a daily basis she'd have a beautiful silky coat and by putting all the um by, by using this you're pulling all her natural oils through her coat which is the best thing for any cat is to have their own conditioning their own natural conditioner coming through the coat because it waterproofs them and it keeps them warm so uh, it's much better for them to have their own oils through the coat than anything else but obviously if you do want to put a little bit of treatment on you can but don't overdo it they don't really need it if you're grooming on a regular base regular basis Say, Anne, you're letting a lot of this coat go, aren't you? Hey, you're letting a lot of coat go today. Oh, nice. 